Law Warrior Extended, CLN-7V, Chameleon. Overview. Manufactured since the early 2500s, the Chameleon is best known as the premier training mech for hundreds of thousands of Innisfear mech warriors. Though the clan invasion has prompted many manufacturers to step up production of frontline mechs, the Chameleon is still being produced in record numbers. These new Chameleons are being manufactured for the military academies, many of which have expanded their training programs to accommodate the flood of applicants interested in becoming mech warriors. In 3052, Defiance Industries announced plans to sell all plans and molds for the Chameleon to free up more production lines for new frontline machines. In June of 3053, Defiance sold its rights to the Chameleon to Gillian Suliben, the daughter of a wealthy Tamar businessman killed during the clan invasion. Using her father's government connections, Miss Suliben purchased the remains of an old manufacturing plant on the planet Storfers, and officially incorporated JB Battlemax. In February of 3056, the first new chameleons rolled off the production line. Capabilities The chameleon and its heavier counterpart, the Crockett, served as the SLDF's training mechs for more than a hundred years. The chameleon was the training vehicle for would-be pilots of fast, jump-capable medium and light mechs. Its weapons, though average by battlefield standards, are well suited to the abilities of a relatively green pilot. A large laser and two medium lasers comprise the mech's heavy firepower, with three small lasers and two machine guns helping the new recruit fend off infantry attack. To teach pilots in training about the dangers of excess heat, the Chameleon's battle computer can be set to lock out all weapons and jump jets if the heat rises above a certain level. New recruits quickly learn the value of monitoring the heat scale indicator. Deployment The standard Chameleon 7V serves in MechWarrior Academies throughout the Inner Sphere and the Periphery. The combat variants of the Chameleon have yet to see action. Variants JB Battlemax have several combat variants of the Chameleon in the works. The 7W variant drops all the small lasers and both machine guns and adds two tons of armor and double heat sinks. An extended range large laser replaces the standard large laser, and the left arm mounted medium laser is upgraded to a pulse variant. The 7Z variant replaces the standard 300 VLAR engine with an XL engine and adds three and a half extra tons of armor for maximum protection. In addition, a second large laser and an ER large laser replace the smaller mediums and machine guns. To help dissipate the extra heat generated by the new weapons, the design includes double heat sinks. Chameleon 3058 Upgrade Overview Just about every mech warrior worth his or her salt remembers the Chameleon. The popular training mech has been manufactured since the 2500s, with total production numbers running somewhere in the tens of thousands. Since the production line was within the impenetrable Hesperus II facilities, the Chameleon never suffered the same fate as hundreds of other battle mech lines that were destroyed in the fury of the succession wars. In 3052, Innisfear houses ramped up production of new designs to a level unseen since the height of the Star League, and to make room for massive demand, Defiance announced that it would be closing down the line to produce the newly developed Night Sky battle mech. Knowing that the need for MechWarrior training would only increase over time, a Lyran businesswoman purchased the rights to once again produce the ancient design under JB Battlemax, and she planned to offer combat variants for purchase to any party, and by 3056, the Chameleon was back in production. Capabilities Designed with training in mind, Defiance figured academies would want pilots to learn the importance of mobility and heat management. Mediocre armor and an uncomfortably high weapons to heat sink ratio were deliberately included in the design to force Greenhorns to think beyond the tactic of a slow advance of alpha striking. By giving the Chameleon the ability to jump 180 meters and hold a maximum speed of over 95 kph, the designers hoped pilots would realize how beneficial it would be to maintain constant movement during combat to avoid losing what small amount of armor the mech has. Its weapons are also substandard a large laser and a pair of mediums for most situations, and a battery of machine guns and small lasers to deal with light targets. When fired all at once and moving at full speed, the heat generated is enormous, risking immediate shutdown. To teach pilots heat management, special software is installed in the mech, and beginning at start up, the program would monitor the current heat level and automatically shut down weapons that would risk raising the ambient temperature beyond a certain level, leaving the pilot with less of a choice. 
Good pilots found that to stay hard to hit and be able to use their best weapons, a high ground speed would be used instead of constant employment of jump jets. Though helpful with new mech warriors, more experienced ones found this program frustrating, preventing the chameleon from ever being used as a frontline mech. Deployment Every academy in the Inner Sphere and the Periphery, and according to some rumours of the clan homeworlds, has at least one chameleon in its ranks. Though not seeing action often, the chameleon is commonly trotted out for actual combat for when an invader will attempt to overrun an academy. Two variants, however, have seen extensive combat since introduction. Used in various training units that are sent into the battlefield, the cadres of the Federated Sons and the Lyran Alliance put the benign-looking battle mech to good use. Enemy units have often mistaken the chameleon variants for a standard version and categorise it as low threat due to its tendency to overheat quickly. The enemy then is often surprised when they're hit by laser blasts coming from a chameleon over 500 metres out. This has occurred several times until units on both sides update their battle software to recognise the variants. Variants Slow sales initially met the release of the combat variants, but the outlook since the Civil War has been encouraging, as many older pilots have a nostalgic attachment to one of the first battle mechs they ever piloted. The first variant is the 7W, that drops the lighter weapons for an additional 2 ton of armour. The large laser is upgraded to an extended range version, while the left arm medium is swapped out for a pulse. Double heat sinks were installed to help manage the heat problems, and JB disabled the management software to allow mech warriors more freedom in battlefield operations though it can be manually turned back on if the pilot wishes. The second variant is more of a support version, instead of an endosteel chassis, an extra light engine is installed, and all of the weaponry is stripped for a trio of large lasers, the primary one being extended range. Three and a half extra ton of armour is mounted to protect the fragile frame, and double heat sinks allow the 7Z chameleon to become more involved in high intensity confrontation. Right, so another extended dose here from TRO3058. So going from the original production uh, run of the book, we have the stats of mass 50 tons, chassis is an Enran TXS-2A, power plant is a VLA 300, cruiser 67, max speed of 95, jump jets are McLeod specials with 180 meter capacity, armor is simple plate, manufacturer's type M. Its equipment standard is a Cyclops I large laser, two Intec medium lasers, three Defiance B3S small lasers, and two Scattergun light machine guns, manufactured by JB Battlemex on Storfers. Communication system is the Jolex systems, and targeting and tracking is the OptiSight 12. It has a armor value of 9 on the head, 18 on the CT, 5 on the rear, four, uh, sorry, 12 on the left and right torso, with 4 on the rear of those, and 12 on the arms and legs. Equipped with a right arm mounted large, a right arm mounted medium, a left arm mounted uh, medium, two smalls in the right torso, one in the left torso, it's machine gun ammo in the left torso, two machine guns in the CT, and then the jump jets spread across the legs and the side torsos. Not a bad looking mech. The upgrade version has largely the same information, it's still the same chassis of the Enran TXS 2A, it just rounds the cruising and max speed. So it takes out the point numbers from the KPH. Still the same jump jet, still the same armor and weapon information there. This one's kind of interesting because it some of the others will tend to update or change some of the, the information. But this was a largely similar write-up, which is nice. Because um, it means that basically the mech hasn't altered all that much. And you know what? I like the look of the chameleon. Uh, I think it, it looks pretty cool, actually. It's a, It looks like a mini Battlemaster, the same kind of head. It's carrying the large laser, though it's kind of hard to see in the artwork, but you can just see the hand, bottom of the hand, poking out underneath the large on the right arm. Um, I think it looks pretty decent, and it also does evoke that kind of basic trainer unit, and it's nice to see another training mech. The original proper f like write-up of a training mech was technically the Merlin, uh, alongside things like the Crockett, uh, or what would later be called the Katana. Uh, so it's kind of cool that they decided to, all right, retroactively, the Chameleon was never in, uh, say, technical readout 2750, despite apparently being a mech that's been around since the 2500s. But it's cool that the idea that this was probably a, the mech that most pilots had, you know, been pil uh, running around in originally, the idea that this is the kind of thing that 
raiders and pirates or even other great houses during like the third succession war era may have been bumping into regularly when they were attacking uh, academies and stuff like that so it's nice um and you know it's not a bad loadout to be honest for 50 ton uh, a pair of mediums and a large is a fairly decent package there and then you've got the smalls just to back it up uh, for when you do get close up and you you know you get into that brawling distance and you've got something you can fire if you're not like close to overheat after running and yeah being able to move a uh, walk of uh, six run of nine with a jump six it's pretty decent yeah it's only got the 10 heat sinks which is definitely a big issue but obviously the the variants try to alleviate that but i like it it's got some drawbacks to it as well but it's still yeah it could still be used and it's pretty fun and it's great for you know if you're gming a scenario where say the players are either the academy pilots so someone might be in a chameleon or a few of them might be in chameleons or you're attacking an academy you can throw a chameleon in there it's not it's not very weak it's still kind of deadly you know, it's it's got some uh, it's got some threat it's got a reach one thing i have just noticed however I just want to double check this. 18.5. Okay. Yeah, 12 and 4. Okay, yeah, the armor arrangement. I thought the armor arrangement was a little bit different between the books, but no, it's exactly the same. But yeah, anyway, that's me. Rambled on long enough. 11 and a half minutes. The Chameleon. Uh, it's a cool little 50 tonner. So uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you have a good week, and I'll, I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.